In Context Design in SolarWorks is a powerful feature that allows designers to create and modify components within the context of an assembly. Rather than designing parts in isolation, In Context Design enables the development of components directly within the assembly environment, taking into account the surrounding parts and their relationships. In Context Design has a number of benefits. Since parts are designed around each other, it can be easier to ensure proper fit and functionality. And also, when in context features are updated, the changes are reflected across all parts that use it, not only saving time, but ensuring consistency across the design. It's worth noting that in context design can become complicated, and it's easy to get confused with references, so it's not always a suitable workflow. In this video, we're going to take a look at some of the basics. There are two main methods when working with in context design. A part file can initially be designed independently with its own sketches and features, then in context features added. Or alternatively, a new file can be created within the context of an assembly and built around other geometry. This part has been modeled independently in its own part file, but the position of the holes need to be consistent with the position of the holes that already exist within another part file. In order to achieve this, the part is added to the assembly and mated into position. As the position of the holes is going to change, the part needs to have its mates added without using the holes as mate selections. Once located, the position of the holes in the part can be adjusted to match those of the existing part. You can either choose to edit the part by right clicking and choosing edit part, clicking the button on the command manager with the part selected, or directly editing a feature. When you do this, the interface will change slightly. By default, the other components in the assembly will appear transparent and you'll have access to the usual part editing features. Notice as well that the part name is highlighted in blue in the design tree. In this example, as the feature is a hole wizard, the centre position of the holes can be easily snapped into place based on the position of the holes in the other part. To leave the edit part mode at any point, either click the edit component button or click the icon in the top right of the viewport. The second example looks at creating a brand new part file within the context of an assembly. From the assembly tab, under insert components, click the new part button. SolarWorks is now looking for a selection to position the part. If a face or plane is selected, this will become the front plane of the newly created part. A sketch is also created automatically once this selection has been made. Like the previous example, Whilst we are in context of an assembly, the environment that is being worked on is now that of a part. This can be seen as the edit component is selected in the top left of the ribbon. From here, sketches can be created and features added, just like in any other part file. The existing edges and vertices of other components can also be referenced. When a feature is created, its end condition can be driven by the position of other items within the assembly. Here, for example, the Up to Surface option can be used to select the face of another component. Because the part has been created within the assembly, it currently does not exist as a separate file, but only exists within the assembly as a virtual component. To save the part as its own file, it can be renamed and saved externally from the right mouse button menu. Assembly level features allow users to add features directly to components from within the assembly environment, such as holes, cuts and extrusions. These features can be applied to individual components or multiple components at the same time and can exist purely at the assembly level, meaning that the features are not present when the part is opened. Alternatively, the features can be propagated to the part level. Propagation to part level is really useful as it is a great way of ensuring consistency across a range of components. However, it isn't always required in some designs, as sometimes material is removed from a part as a secondary process, such as a hole being cut through multiple parts once assembled. Because the hole doesn't exist when the part is manufactured, it won't want to exist in the part and the part's drawings, but it would want to exist at the assembly level drawing. Whichever approach you are taking, when in context features are added to a part, a reference is created. This reference is added through the assembly in which the feature is added. So in our examples, a reference is created from our part file to the existing part file within the assembly through the assembly. This means that when we change the driving part, our related part will update automatically the next time it is opened. 
When a reference is created, it's shown within the part file. An arrow is now visible next to the feature that was edited, which indicates the in-context relationship. It's important to note that the driven part file should always be able to refer to the assembly and hence the reference part. Otherwise, the reference will fail. So be careful when moving or renaming files. It's also worth noting that you can break an in-context relationship if you want to. Finally, be careful when adding in-context relationships to not create a circular reference, where several parts all rely on each other, as this can cause rebuild issues later on. That brings us to the end of this introduction video on in-context design. I hope it's been useful. Make sure to let us know if you have any ideas for other topics we can cover in future videos. And remember, if you're looking to create engaging 3D interactive presentations from your CAD, be sure to check out Cadasio. Create a free account today at cadasio.com.